So if you've been using the terminal long enough, you've probably accidentally deleted some file or some folder at some point you really didn't mean to do. But what if there was some way to avoid that without having to do confirmation prompts every time you wanted to run RM? Now this is where something like Trash CLI or various other trash managers actually come in. So I'm going to be looking at Trash CLI today, but I presume the others are probably fine. They're all written in either shell script or Python, so you're not really going to get much of a speed boost regardless of which one you use. Trash CLI seems to be pretty basic, but for a trash manager, you don't really need much. As long as you can see what's in your trash, you can restore stuff, you can put stuff in your trash, and you can empty it. That's pretty much all you need, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. So Trash CLI is actually a package that contains multiple different programs. So it has got Trash Put, Trash Empty, Trash List, Trash Restore, and Trash RM. So they're all pretty basic programs. I'll show you what each of them do in just a moment, but if you do want to use some other sort of trash manager, there is a list on the Arch Linux wiki, so you could also use Bash Trash, Trash Man, RM Trash, and I presume that there are other ones that just aren't listed here, but I'm going to use Trash CLI, and there's a very good reason for that. So Trash CLI will actually use the same sort of trash location that something like GNOME, KDE, XFCE use, so that if I was to ever switch to one of those, or if I did switch to some other sort of trash management, it would automatically retain the trash that I was using. I wouldn't have to set up some new folder for it and nothing like that. It would just automatically keep working and honestly, that's fine for me. So let's just have a look at the components of Trash Seal. Actually, first before we do that, let's just see how to install it. So if you're on Arch, you can install it from the standard package repo. So sudo pacman-s trash-cli and that will download all the little programs we need for trash CLI. So we'll start off with trash put. So trash put is pretty straightforward, does exactly what you would expect it to do. It puts stuff into the trash. So there's no options for it. You just run it very simply like this. So let's just try that out. We'll make a, a test file so I don't really have to delete anything that I actually want. So I've just made this fake file called D and let's run trash dash put and then pass in the name of the file. And as we can see, that has just run successfully now. So no output is good output. So the next one we have is Trash Empty. So Trash Empty, also pretty straightforward what it does. So as you would expect, Trash Empty will just empty the trash. There's nothing too crazy about that. All of this stuff is pretty straightforward. I presume that some of the other ones do have some arguments. I think that uh, Trash Man actually does have extra arguments, but really... I don't know what extra stuff you could really want it to do besides, I guess, automatic deletion, but that's pretty easy to set up without having anything built into the trash manager. But we'll get to that a bit later in the video. So if we just run trash empty, as we will see, no output is good output. So I'll show you trash list now and trash list basically, once again, does exactly what you'd expect to do. So it will actually list all the files that are in your trash. So it'll show you the date that it was put in there and it'll also show you the original path to the file. So let's just make a fake file again. And sorry, that's the wrong one. This one, and then we'll just add that to the trash. And then we can run trash dash list. So as we can see, we now have that file in the trash here. So let's just add a few extra files in here and then go trash dash list. So obviously, because this is just outputting regular text, if you wanted to do something like, I don't know, grep it or other things like that, that's pretty straightforward. All you'd have to do is obviously just pipe that into grep or whatever program you want to pipe it into. Let's say we wanted to search for things that contain the letters DE. And as we can see, that just finds that file in there, as you would expect, nothing too special there. It's just grepping, basically. So the fourth piece of Trash CLI is Trash Restore. So this one is also really straightforward what this does as well. So basically, it'll give you this little interface to restore files. Now, the one problem I have with this is it is only going to work in an interactive mode. You can't say, like, for example, the way you restore files is you have to write a number in here, and then basically that'll restore that file. The problem is, though, that you can't just pipe these numbers in. I would like to see that being added, but it's not a big deal, I guess. So let's just have a look at how Trash Restore works. So Trash Dash Restore. And as you can see, I'm actually really terrible at recording videos. So this is all of the times that I've had to restart recording. But anyway, that's not too important for right now. So if we wanted to restore a file in here, basically all we have to do is say, let's say we want to restore file number three in here. Just type in three 
and press enter. And now if we go and try to have a look at that file, it, the file is now here. So you can easily restore a file by doing that. Now I don't think there's a way to restore a range of files, which is also a little bit annoying. So if we were to do something like zero dot dot, let's say, I don't know, four. No, that doesn't work. So you can't do that, or I don't think you can do zero to four either, which is also a little bit annoying, but once again, you're generally not gonna be restoring files. It would be nice to have that there though, just so you can easily restore all of your trash, because right now, if you do wanna restore everything, the only way to do that is to go into interactive mode and then do it one by one by one. I would like to have it a bit easier to do that. I guess the way you could do it, actually no, there's no easy way to script that I would say. So yeah, that's the only annoying thing about using Trash CLI. Plus there's not an obvious way to quit out of this. You just have to give it an invalid entry, which once again, not a big deal, but it's, it's just a thing to keep in mind. Now the last one we have is Trash RM, which is sort of like Trash Empty, but it lets you just delete files one by one. So this one works very similar to the way that trash put works. So you can say pass in a file directly, you can pass in a regex, or you can pass in a full path. So that's pretty straightforward how that works. So if you want to see which files are available to delete, obviously we're going to have to run trash dash list, and then we can go trash dash rm. And let's say we wanted to remove, I don't know, every single file that uh, has D in it, I guess do that and if we go trash list again as we can see every single file that's like that has now been deleted so that was basically just these two files in here the uh the two test files that i made just before so you may have noticed that every single time i ran one of the trash commands it was showing an alias so yes i actually have aliased all of them basically because some of the names are way too long and i don't really feel like writing out the entire name but anyway this is pretty much how i've shortened them down so trash put is now trp Trash empty is TRE, trash list is TRL, trash restore is TRR, and trash RM is TRM, which is all pretty straightforward, I would say. Now, I don't actually run these from my terminal a lot of the time, so what I'll normally do is I'll actually run them from my terminal file manager, which in this case right now is LF. So I'll just show you what I'm actually doing in LF as well, because basically the way you delete in LF normally is just by using the RM function, which it's fine, but as I said at the start of this video, I've occasionally deleted files that I didn't really want to delete. So I've pretty much set Trash CLI up to work within LF. So this right here, this big block, basically the reason it's set up like this is because I'll occasionally put spaces in file names, which I know is a really bad idea, but anyway, if you don't ever have spaces in file names, you don't have to do all of this extra stuff. You could just have this while loop that basically loops over all of the files, that would be much easier. But I just had to do a bit of extra stuff to make sure it's gonna work with spaces in there as well. So I've also got one here in for clearing the trash and also restoring the trash. I don't ever do trash RM or trash list within LF, but I could easily set those up as well. So I've then got these bound to a pretty sensible keys. So I've got trash set to DD just because that really makes sense as a Vim user, I would say. Then I've got clear trash to TC and restore trash to TR. So trash clear, trash restore. I don't know why I wrote the command names backwards. I, I don't know. Anyway, the naming, it, it makes sense in my head at least. I don't know if it's gonna make sense to anyone else though. One of the other things you might care about is whether trash is actually being stored. So that'll be in your .local directory in the share folder, in the trash spelt with a capital folder. So this has all your trash files in it. As I was saying at the start of this video, this is where GNOME and XFC also store their trash. I'm not sure what other desktop environments use it, probably KDE and probably some other others. But anyway, this has some general metadata in it and also has the actual files that you deleted. So these are still regular files. They're not encrypted or anything or like compressed. They're just still the regular files. So you could just play these normally or you could edit these files as you would normally do. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend editing them from your trash folder. You might as well just restore them because that's kind of the point of the trash. If they're in the trash, that means you generally don't want them. Anyway, this uh, info folder in here just has some info about where all of the files and folders actually came from. So it'll have the path the file came from and also the deletion date. Do not modify this stuff in here unless you want to make sure your files aren't going to the correct location. 
I would recommend just letting Trash CLI handle this or whatever trash manager you're using because otherwise it might be a bit of a problem. The one thing that Trash CLI doesn't do, which would, I guess, be pretty useful, is it doesn't have a way to set up automatic deletions on when your trash gets too big or setting up for a date. Now, for deleting on a certain date, that's really easy. You can just set that up with a cron job or with like a system D timer or something. So if we just do that with cron tab, we can just set that up pretty easily. So say if we wanted it to be, I don't know, every half an hour, every half day. Just have a look at how cron jobs work. I will do a separate video on cron jobs at some point, but it'd be pretty easy to set it up like this. Or obviously if you prefer system D timers or various other methods to do timers, those will also work just fine as well. If you want to delete on a certain size of your trash, that'll be a little bit more difficult. There is apparently a program to do this. It's called Auto Trash, but it's not in the AUR, so I guess you're gonna have to go and compile that yourself. I don't know if it's a, like a Python script or something. If it's a Python script, I guess you don't have to compile it. But you guys can go find this one yourself. You do wanna do things like make sure you have a certain amount of free space, delete files after a certain date, any of this other stuff in here. So yeah, just have a look into that. I don't personally use it because for my system, I generally don't find it too annoying to just run trash empty every couple of days or whenever I'm running out of file space. For me, I don't really think that's too much extra work. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So before I end the video, I want to thank my patrons, Andre Road, LQ Larry, and Zilva, who helped make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel, or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of the video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, so feel free to check that out. I've also got my social link, so that'll be my Discord and various other things like that, so feel free to check that out as well. And I've also got my alternate video platforms, so that'll be my BitTube and my library. So also, don't forget to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, and also remember to subscribe. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.